the president. Members, will please remain standing for the chief executive. The chief executive. The Chief Executive will answer questions on the policy address raised by members. A member whose question has been answered may, if necessary, and for the purpose of elucidation only, ask a short follow-up question. Well, many members have already pressed a button, I see. Dr. Young, some. Thank you, Madam President. On the 1st of July, over 500,000 people took to the street, and more than one, and one million people voted in the district council elections. And on the New Year's Day, 100,000 people took to the street to fight for democracy. But then, in your policy address, Mr. Tong, you did not address at all the aspirations of the people with regard to uh, democracy, and the people are, are felt are feeling let down. So do you not think that the central government should have full confidence in how Hong Kong will, uh, people will uh, approach the question of um, constitutional development? And while you uh, consult the central government on the view, should you also at the same time consult the people's views on um, the constitutional development? Dr. Young? I told you with regard to the 1st of July rally. I said on that day, I followed the rally closely on TV, and I did a lot of soul searching afterwards. I also saw there were demands from the people and there were grievances among the people with regard to the government's uh, governance. And uh, since then, you know, in the past months, I and the government have worked very hard to make improvements. We've seen the public demand that it's, we must um, try to uh, improve the economy and people's livelihoods. So we have um, done a great deal in this respects. And we also appreciate that there are a lot of views on Article 23 legislation. So we actually withdrew that piece of legislation. So the government did respond to the, these um, views. And I'm also fully aware of the fact that there are people who demand democracy in Hong Kong. But, but I can tell you this, Dr. Young, today what we are doing here is to ensure that after we start the constitutional review, everything will go smoothly. So that's why we must first address certain fundamental issues. So these are a separate matter altogether. Now, fundamental issues are about issues of principles and issues of the law. And it's about um, a, um, the review um, and also the based law, relevant based law provisions. So, so what do they mean exactly? So these are some, uh, this is groundwork uh, that we need to do. And there is now a free member task force to take up the work and they will con be consulting the central government. They will also be listening to views to people in Hong Kong. I think that's a very good way forward. Uh, it's actually a decision based on our respect for the views expressed among the public. Dr. Yeo, now in accordance with Article 45 of the Basic Law, um, the democratic firm must uh, take uh, into account the um, circumstances in Hong Kong, but then the circumstances now are that there are people demanding democracy. Now, while you seek the legal views of um, the uh, central government, uh, is it the case that it's exclusive with seeking views of the people of Hong Kong? If not, why can't the two be taken together at the same time? Dr. Young, as I said, the very first step is to first sort out certain issues of principles and um, legal issues. And while we consult the central government, we could also at the same time listen to the views expressed by people in Hong Kong. And so we must get, first get that sorted, and then we'll see how we should proceed with the constitutional review. Dr. Lowing-Lock? 
Mr. Tong, I'm glad that uh, in paragraph 32 of the policy address, you refer to um, developing healthcare industries. I think that will not only meet the needs in, among Hong Kong people, it would also help to promote our services to the mainland and to other places in Asia. That's always been my uh, position. But um, if you want to develop uh, the healthcare industries, we cannot um, uh, have a government-led initiative because um, the public um, healthcare services are funded by public funds and they are, they are also to serve the public. So there will be some limitations in that respect. So what are the concrete measures and initiatives that will help to develop the healthcare industries? And what measures are there in the government that will um, actually promote the development of the private healthcare sector in Hong Kong so that we are able to develop the healthcare industries and achieve our objective? Well, Dr. Lo, every time when I meet with you, you always raise this issue. And I agree with you. Here, we are talking about um, an initiative that should not be taken up within the public healthcare system. Rather, it's something that ought to be promoted in the private healthcare sector. I think the government could play a very active and supporting role here. That is, um, in the, if the private sector has um, got any ideas in mind, they want to do this or that, and they would like the government to uh, give their support uh, by way of policy, or they need our support to help them um, open up markets, or if they come across any obstacles overseas or in other places, they would like our assistance to help remove the coast. Well, these are all areas where we could play an active part. And I hope very much that the healthcare sector, in particular the private healthcare sector in Hong Kong, could also um, actively promote this development. I can assure you there will be staunch support from the government, and we wish, wish you success. <laughs> Dr. Lowe? Well, Mr. Tong, I would like to see success as well. Now, for a long time, uh, the healthcare system in Hong Kong has been government-led, and there's even vicious competition, so that the private healthcare sector is striving hard to survive. So, uh, would there be any review in this respect, so that there could be a partnership between the private and the public sector, instead of um, you know, um, unhealthy competition. Well, for many years, the public healthcare system has been run very well. But of course, we have limited funds. So we hope, therefore, the private sector could play a bigger role. In, our, in the healthcare system. Now, in this respect, government will um, give all its support because we would like to see the private sector to take up a bigger role. Now, going back to your question about developing the healthcare industries, I think another catalyst could probably be bringing in you know, some of the more renowned um, health care groups uh, who, which specialize in convalescence, for instance, overseas, because there are many such um, organizations overseas or hospitals uh, which specialize in this field. I'm sure they will be able to help um, um, in this respect. So I, I hope there will be some uh, study done in that respect. Mr. Andrew Wong. Madam President, if I could uh, follow up on Dr. Young's um, question. Now, since October, the Constitutional Affairs Panel has been waiting for a consultation table on the constitutional reform. And in fact, in October, we were promised that uh, before the end of December 2003, a timetable would be available. But now we're told that because um, the Central People's Government is inclined to first uh, resolving certain issues regarding basic law, so a task force will be set up first. But now, of course, it is important to work on, to sort out the interpretation of basic law, but there is a timetable there. And while you consult uh, Beijing's views, 
uh, which also listed the views of the people of Hong Kong, because in the policy address, uh, you have said that uh, you would welcome um, views from the people of Hong Kong, you would welcome a rational discussion. So is there a timetable, like um, a month, two months, or three months, for the, say, the task force to complete the task? And so would you be releasing a timetable also uh, on how, when we will get an understanding about the interpretation of basic law? And, you know, when it comes to interpretation, it could be a interpretation in a broader sense or in a narrower sense. Of course, I'm, I would prefer a broader interpretation. But uh, is there any inclination on the part of the SAR government in that um, the, um, the, the uh, interpretation should be in a broader sense? Please, um, Mr. Wong, please come to your question quickly because there are more than 20 members on the uh, queue. Well, if you have not interrupted me, Madam President, I, would, I have almost finished my question. No, then it's a problem because I don't know what your question is. Well, I think my question is clear. This task force, you know, is going to consult this, the, Beijing, uh, the Beijing authorities, the Central People's Government's authorities on uh, the issue. Uh, is there a timetable for the completion of the task? And would uh, you be favoring a broader or narrower uh, interpretation? Mr. Wong, if I could first make one point clear, we are not trying to store anything here. And then my second point is the central government has uh, made this request and I believe we are duty bound to, duty bound to respond to this request. And third point, we do not have a time frame now. We're working on that. But I can tell you there will be no stalling. We will work as soon and as quickly as possible. Mr. Wong, my question is, this task force will be consulting the Central People's Government and the public of Hong Kong. Now, is there a timetable for the consultation? Say, would you uh, ask it to complete this task in three months? Mr. Wong, really today I cannot give you a timetable, but we will uh, work as quickly as possible. Mr. Leung Fu Wang, Med Madam President. Security, please um, lead that uh, gentleman out of the ga public gallery. Please, if you do not stop, then I will have to suspend the meeting. Please. Uh, my apology, Mr. Leung, please uh, continue. Mr. Tong, each time in the public opinion poll, uh, it seems that the, the prime area of concern is the economy and employment. I have actually um, given my views to you on a number of occasions with regard to the uh, uh, importation of labor or, or you know, the railway development and um, employment for drivers and so on. Well, I would like you to make a decision on those matters, but uh, I'm rather disappointed by your policy address released yesterday. Now, in paragraph 52 in your policy address, you said you will ensure that uh, pay attention to whether those working on government contracts are receiving reasonable wage. Now, that's also a matter of concern for the labor sector. So, but do you have any concrete ideas in mind? For example, would you stipulate in the contract that there must not be uh, many layers of subletting or, or subcontracting? Or would you strengthen the penalty clauses for um, um, the delinquent um, um, employers? What they do? Of course, um, we attach a great deal of importance to this issue. Uh, we would um, employ uh, various measures to uh, crack down on um, malpractices regarding uh, subcontracting. Uh, on many occasions, the labor sector uh, talked to me about uh, the uh, domestic, um, local domestic helpers. We are offering them uh, transport um, or traveling uh, subsidies. Uh, this is something that is kept under constant review. We would consider whether there can be any uh, adjustments. 
for the other issues, uh, they are still uh, being considered. I cannot respond to you uh, immediately. Mr. Long, for policies to be effective, uh, they have to be uh, good enough. You talked about the uh, local domestic helpers being given some uh, traveling subsidies. Um, but at the same time, you are bringing in so many foreign domestic helpers, and there is a the contradiction there. Mr. Tong, since we've announced uh, the uh, $400 uh, levy for foreign domestic helpers, the uh, upward trend of, uh, of uh, uh, hiring foreign domestic helpers uh, has stopped. Uh, Mrs. Miriam Lau, Mr. Tong, uh, the logistics industry is facing uh, an immediate problem. Uh, which is not so much um, the adequacy of the s facilities, but rather the, there is a discrepancy in terms of cost between Hong Kong and Shenzhen. Since it is cheaper to operate in Shenzhen, many uh, shippers would prefer uh, using Shenzhen facilities. And recent, in recent years, uh, the Shenzhen ports have been, have been experiencing double-digit growth, uh, whereas in Hong Kong has been uh, experiencing a single-digit uh, growth. It is expected that um, there would be further development uh, in Shenzhen, there would be more births uh, coming on stream, the situation would be uh, getting more dire. In paragraph 22 of the policy address, it refers to uh, the strengthening of um, the logistics uh, cooperation uh, and, and the strategies for cooperation. Would that include the coordination between the development of uh, the ports between Hong Kong and Shenzhen uh, in order to avoid any um, fictitious competition. Mr. Tong, Ms. Lau, what you said, everything you said is uh, absolutely right. Uh, the cost in Hong Kong is on the high side. I said in the policy address that um, if this goes on like this, Hong Kong would stand to lose. Uh, so there has to be something that, um, that has to be done. Uh, there are various uh, issues being considered. Um, the customs clearance uh, is uh, one example. We have uh, been making progress every six months. If uh, we can do a better job there, it will certainly reduce the cost. With the coming on stream of uh, the Western Shenzhen Western Corridor, the, the cost will also be brought further down. As to the cost um, of, uh, of uh, the ports, the uh, construction cost uh, would not differ tremendously. Um, this is not highly labor intensive. The operating costs uh, would not be terribly uh, uh, different. Uh, I think uh, we have to increase uh, our throughput. Uh, to answer your question, we did uh, raise the matter with the central government for uh, major infrastructure, including ports, there should be coordination. There, there has been very much a consensus there. We would be moving towards uh, this direction. Uh, this will stand Hong Kong in good stead. But at the end of the day, we have to reduce the cost because otherwise um, the, the clients uh, would not uh, find this acceptable. Mrs. Miriam Lau, Madam President, Mr. Tong, in terms of coordination of uh, port facilities, how soon do you think uh, you would be able to give a message to the logistics industry? They are very concerned. Over the past five years, uh, the um, throughput uh, has reduced uh, because of, because of uh, more facilities uh, in Shenzhen, and they are making inroads into Hong Kong's business. In the short term, in the medi medium term, this fills the industry with uh, tremendous worries. How soon do you think you would give a message? To them. Mr. Tong, if I um, go beyond this a little bit, many people criticize me for doing things uh, in a tardy manner. I'm a few steps behind. Now, I uh, talked to the central government about uh, the offshore renminbi uh, center, and I tried to bring uh, renminbi businesses to Hong Kong. I tried to uh, bring in a settlement uh, arrangement. I put it off, I made it, but that would take uh, a bit of time to materialize. I still remember three years ago, I talked to uh, Premier Zhu that if uh, the mainland market is not open to Hong Kong, it would certainly be detrimental to Hong Kong's economy. That was three years ago. I wasn't a few or three steps behind. I talked about this 
three years ago. And Mr. Zhu said in response that uh, the central government uh, is uh, uh, in dialogue uh, with the WTO, uh, so we have to wait. I still remember uh, when China uh, gained access to the WTO, uh, I raised the matter with uh, Beijing, and we managed to make an agreement. And Premier Wen uh, also agreed that um, an agreement uh, would be signed um, by the end of June. I, I quote you these examples uh, because we were trying to identify uh, things that um, could be done. The container port uh, is another example. We have the infrastructure uh, coordination committee. Uh, we hope that uh, something good uh, will come out of it. I will not be three steps behind. Dr. Tang Siu Tong. Mr. Tong, in, his, uh, in your policy address, uh, you said that um, the accountability system uh, has been a success. I don't think, uh, I, I beg to differ. Uh, Mr. Tong, how do you think you can make a success of the accountability system? How can you make sure that there will be proper coordination between the different portfolios? And also, how can you make sure that um, the directives uh, would be filtered through uh, to the lower rung of the hierarchy? Mr. Tong. Dr. Tang, in the development of uh, Hong Kong, the accountability system uh, represents uh, a major step for the government uh, to embrace the people-based um, governance. Uh, this represents a very important step. We started this uh, a year and a half ago, surely. There were areas uh, where uh, there would be room for improvement. We must realize that uh, for any uh, reform, political reforms like this, uh, which are very complex, we may not be able to uh, see results in a year or two's time. It would take um, uh, a bit of time. We have been reviewing the situation. We have been um, very critical of ourselves. Now, if uh, you look at us uh, every quarter, every year, you would uh, realize that uh, there would be uh, improvements achieved. Dr. Tang. Mr. Tong, you said there are rooms for, for improvement. Can you be more specific? What area have you identified room for improvement? Mr. Tong. There are many rooms, many areas. There are rooms for improvement, uh, like, for instance, the, uh, how uh, can the principal officials uh, do a better job? How can they uh, get to the public uh, more? They are uh, settled with a very heavy burden, and, and they can do a better job, certainly. Mr. Tem Yu Chung. Mr. Chung, in connection with SIPA, he said that um, there are 273 uh, products from Hong Kong that can be exported to uh, the mainland tariff-free. According to some uh, manufacturers, uh, they said that uh, Hong Kong food products are, are welcome in the mainland, like uh, chicken powder, um, the preserved uh, sausages, um, and, and so on, but they are not included. Uh, is it something that uh, was missed out uh, in, the, in the dialogue? And, and if not, how soon do you think an agreement can be reached? Uh, you immediately talked about the uh, new and high technologies. Um, if uh, we uh, venture into uh, this kind of development, uh, we have to wait um, because it would be it would take time to yield results. But if you include these food products, it would certainly create more job opportunities. Mr. Tom, Mr. Tam, uh, this is precisely what I want to see. Um, the number 273. covered uh, most of the uh, items uh, for export into the mainland. I remember uh, under the WTO there could be as many as 4,000 items. Uh, the Premier said to me that he would um, try to enrich uh, the SIPA, that we can uh, start off with uh, 273 and, and, and bring up the number. And 
the most important thing is that um, the cooperation uh, between uh, Hong Kong and mainland customs is good enough. If um, the cooperation is good, uh, then certainly we, we would be we would be able to bring up the number. Mr. Tam. Mr. Tong. Uh, food products in Hong Kong um, are very impressive. Uh, we do have a quality uh, assurance. If you can uh, uh, get on with uh, this uh, sooner than 2006, it would be a good idea. Mr. Tong, uh, we'll strive for that. Ms. Sit Ho, Madam President, the constitutional uh, reform uh, would have to, to abide by the gradual approach. But the thing is, uh, uh, tens of thousands of people took to the street uh, demanding uh, greater democratization. And after July 1st, uh, there were many uh, pro-establishment people going to Beijing. We are worried that um, they may not be able to speak for the people of Hong Kong. Of course, we'd like to have consultation to gauge public opinion. Mr. Tong, uh, would you uh, consider arranging for a, a formal channel whereby the people of Hong Kong, those who took to the street, would be able to take their views? Uh, to the Beijing authorities so that uh, the views will not be distorted in any way. Mr. Tong. Ms. Ho. As a matter of fact, um, Beijing is fully aware of uh, what's going on in Hong Kong. Through various channels, uh, they uh, managed to uh, grasp uh, the sentiments in Hong Kong. Did I reflect um, the sentiments in Hong Kong to Beijing? As chief executive, uh, I do have the obligation to do so, and I did do so. But Beijing is uh, able to get to grips with uh, the sentiments in Hong Kong. Don't underestimate them, Ms. Ho. Uh, Mr. Tong, I never doubt that uh, the chief executive reflected our views, but there must be some political stance uh, that, that uh, got across to Beijing, but there are many different stances. There are many different voices in Hong Kong, and I hope I know that um, uh, people would like would, would not like to see uh, their rational demand for democratization be distorted. Um, did this or was this reflected to the Beijing, or would it be not be a good idea for a proper channel for people to air their views to Beijing? Mr. Tong. Ms. Ho, I think uh, you have to uh, give the first step a chance. Uh, let's uh, get the uh, discussion on the legal matter, the principal matter, out of the way before we move on to the next step. Mr. Martin Lee, or Mr. Uh, Lee Chuck Yan. Mr. Tong, um, I think the people of Hong Kong are listening to your policy address with sadness. Half a million people took to the street in a peaceful manner, in, in, a, in a positive manner, to demand for greater democracy. In return, in your policy address, you told the people of Hong Kong that uh, you had to consult um, the central government first. Our sadness lies with the fact that our chief executive um, drains Hong Kong water. Um, he has ties in Hong Kong. But the fact remains that he is hesitant, or he dares, dares not uh, con convey uh, the aspirations for democracy uh, to the Beijing authorities. Mr. Tong, if I may put this to you, when you um, went on your duty visit, did you lobby for the people of Hong Kong for universal suffrage for the chief executive? Did you lobby uh, for, on our behalf for greater democracy in Hong Kong? Mr. Lee, as I said, I truly reflected the present situations in Hong Kong to Beijing. But there are three points I'd like to make here. First of all,
to lobby the uh, Beijing government. We must realize, we must fully realize that, or if I may put it this way, six years ago, when I uh, became chief executive, I started saying that um, if Hong Kong is good, they, uh, China would be good. If China is good, uh, so will Hong Kong be. This is something that um, I fully believe over the years. Hong Kong and the mainland of China share the common interest. Why do you have to lobby? Everybody is working in the interest of Hong Kong. Under these circumstances, what we have to do is to uphold the overall interest in Hong Kong. And we have to consider uh, how we can maintain the prosperity and stability, how can we maintain the livelihood. Hong Kong Jing Fu Yiju. And um, secondly, you know, the Hong Kong government goes by the basic law in conducting a business. Uh, for the past six years, we have strictly observed the basic law. I'm sh uh, that's also the case for the central government. I'm sure it will also do so on the question of constitutional review. I think we need to have this confidence because we have a common interest here. And if I could make two more points. Because I would like these to uh, be clear. Now, I am the chief executive. One of my duties is to implement the basic law. I'm an accountable to the Hong Kong SAR. I'm also accountable to the central authorities. So I have the duty to ensure the proper implementation of the basic law. I also have the duty to report to the central authorities on the implementation of the basic law to see how well it's being implemented and so on. So that is my duty and I will continue to discharge my duty. Now the central government has requested that, you know, uh, chief executive on this question of um, constitutional review, we would like to be able to discuss with you about uh, or to, to, to have a better understanding with you on questions of uh, principles and the basic law before further arrangements should be made. Well, I think that's a um, reasonable request that makes good sense. Now, third point. Does the central authorities uh, or do the central authorities have this power? Well, then I would have to refer you to the basic law, uh, and then we will have to study that. And then you'll see there is actually this power. One country, two systems is um, national policy of the mainland, and the basic law is a piece of national law. It is constitutional development uh, has to do with one country, two systems. It has to do with the implementation of the basic law. So the central authorities have the power and the responsibility because it's accountable to the entire nation to uh, look into this matter. And I think Hong Kong people actually accept this position. So the central government has, um, is, um, uh, is paying much attention to this matter and it's also requested that there should be better communication. I think it's only fair and sensible So I think we must all work very hard to have this done properly. That should be our attitude. Mr. Lee Chuck Yen. Well, just now, Mr. Tong said uh, six years ago, he said uh, if the country is good, then Hong Kong will be good too. So do we have to wait till there is democracy in China before we'll see democracy in Hong Kong? Would you agree? that if there could be more room for democracy in Hong Kong would also be a good thing for China. And my question was, if you have um, 
lobbied the government, for, the central government, for that. Of course, I agree. Under one country, the central authorities have the um, uh, authority because if there is not this authority, we wouldn't have to lobby the central government through you. So my question is: Have you personally? on behalf of all the people of Hong Kong lobbied the central government for this? If you haven't done so, then how can you represent Hong Kong people and how can you be our chief executive? So Hong Kong, uh, I, Mr. Tong, I really hope you will help us, Hong Kong people. Please um, um, lobby for this uh, right that really belongs to us and to our next generation. Please don't wait for you know, this uh, uh, as, a, as a favor from the central government. So, and I ask you, can you ask you again, during a duty visit, did you lobby the central government for us? Mr. Lee, I told you just now, and I will say this again. All the, the whole exercise is really done for the good of Hong Kong, for this generation and for our next generation and many generations to come. This is to ensure that there is full implementation of one country, two systems and the basic law because ensuring the implementation of the basic law is in our fundamental interest. As for how the, uh, we should take forward constitutional development, as I said, that's uh, where we have to start. As the very first step, we must first sort out the issues of principles and uh, the law, and we must get this done first, and then we'll see what we need to do next. Mrs. Selina Chow. Mr. Tong, in your policy address, paragraph 16 to 18, you spell out the commitment of the government and yourself to improve the uh, business environment. Now, you definitely have the full support of the Liberal Party on this. In paragraph 18, there is mention of overregulation and that the regulatory regime has been too tight and detailed, leading to frustration among business people. Well, that is definitely true. So could you give an undertaking, Mr. Tong, that uh, before the uh, administration decides to legislate for anything, it must first make sure that uh, uh, there will be an impact assessment on businesses. That is, you will always do such an assessment as part of the exercise. And then when you do that assessment, can you guarantee that you will make sure that uh, the views of those uh, in the relevant trade are sought? That's the first point. Secondly, for um, some tight regulatory regimes already in place, would there be a comprehensive review to make sure that such overregulation could be relaxed so that uh, we could therefore actually have a business friendly environment. Because this is really our objective. Mrs. Chow, on your first question, you said uh, the Liberal Party supported that. Actually, uh, it's more than you just supporting it. You've raised this to us a number of times. You know, very often these regulations are in place because we want to balance the interests of different interested parties. And when there is a new regulation also, this is the primary consideration. And of course, at the same time, uh, like, you know, in the case of uh, medicine, just there are so many new products coming to market, then we have to consider uh, which is the best way to regulate the market. So these are all the factors that need to be considered. But I, I certainly agree that before we make th our final decision, the government should really consider the, uh, the impact such a move might have on the uh, business environment. This is an important point indeed. And then there are other some very fine and detailed uh, Regulatory practices, well, they may be, you know, a product, uh, uh, a product from the past, and if they're still, uh, if they're already outdated, then they must be removed. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Tang will take a very good look at this. Mrs. Chow, Madam President, 
Well, in the past, we have talked about this a number of times, and we do uh, know that uh, you are very supportive of this, but then it's moving rather too slowly, especially on the second point you made. You know, for some of the excessively tight regulatory regimes, they may actually not be necessary anymore, but still it seems that there is not a systematic or structured review so that these um, unnecessary regulatory regimes could be removed. So would you tell us that you have the de determination to move ahead with this quickly so that we could uh, improve our business environment sooner rather than later? Well, Mr. Tang has got a uh, broad grin there. That means that we are determined to do this, to get this done. Mr. Chairman Guang, Mr. Tong, democracy is a human right. Hong people have been striving for democracy for two decades, but still we're not seeing the end of the tunnel. I think that's really sad for the people of Hong Kong. Now, just now you said the SAR government is not stalling on uh, democratization, but since um, the 1st of July is six months now, still the government could not come up with a timetable for constitutional review. Would you not consider that a uh, stalling tactic? A few months ago, the Secretary for Constitutional Affairs, Mr. Stephen Lam, promised that uh, by the end of last year, there would be a timetable for uh, the consultation or exercise on constitutional review. But so far, you uh, the, the promise not been delivered. So would you not think that the government is stalling the democratization process? Now, you say that you will just set up a task force to listen to views of the central government, but you don't have a timetable for consulting the public. Would you not consider that a stalling tactic? So uh, as regard um, democracy, are you three steps behind or indeed six steps behind? Mr. Joyong, we are not delaying our work. As for the arrangements for the 2007-2008 elections, well, I think we must first uh, deal with the fundamental issues as our first step. And there will be plenty of time to make all the necessary arrangements. And so if there is a need to make any changes to the 2007-2008 elections, well, there will be enough time for that, so that it shouldn't be a problem. Mr. Zhang? Madam President, now if Mr. Tong says that uh, he's not uh, stalling the democratization process, then if you wish to listen to the views of the central government on the basic law and on legal issues, now how come at the same time you cannot even come up with a timetable for listening to the views of the people of Hong Kong? How come you cannot even give us a timetable on the constitutional reform? So would you say that you're still, you have still heard the voices of the people who took to the street or are you actually ignoring those people who took to the street? Mr. Cheung, well, with any uh, task, it's the same with constitutional review, we must first have a sound legal basis. We have to get that sorted out first. And that's the very uh, first basic step, and we are taking that step. Mr. Bernard Chen. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Tong, in paragraph 55 of your policy address, you mentioned that um, the government, the business sector, and the uh, um, third sector will um, be will form a partnership. So would the government take the lead to uh, build a platform for participation by the three parties so that uh, we could um, find a way to uh, solution to addressing various problems? Well, in the past seven months, I've been listening very carefully to a lot of views about the views of the third sector. Of course, many of the views actually come from the social workers. You just raised the suggestion of a platform. I think that's a good idea. Uh, perhaps you could uh, give us more details about your thinking. And then, of course, we'll be keen to uh, take up the discussion on this matter. Now, as I've said, um, we are in the process of economic transformation. 
there are vulnerable groups and the government and the community must be very caring. And also because of globalization, a lot of people are also being marginalized. And so we do have a duty to help them. So we must uh, form a partnership with the social um, work sector. So uh, I'm sure we, I, so we will carefully consider your proposal. Well, Mr. Tong, actually, I was, I was asking if you had a proposal. But anyway, would there be any measures that would encourage the business sector to become involved or for them to get to understand better the work of the NGOs? Uh, do you have any um, proposals in mind? Well, I think we've got a good start already. Because many of these initiatives uh, were led by the social welfare sector and, and these initiatives have been very successful. Uh, I'm sure the government uh, will continue to encourage the, these sectors will be very active in this field. Mr. Albert Chen. Madam President, yesterday when I listened to the policy address, I felt initially that um, the policy address um, uh, had a very strong tourist tone. Uh, it seems that you're not going to do to, to have much initiatives and that's um, great uh, wisdom. But when, uh, and when I listen further, I find that it's not that you are not, uh, you are ju just not refraining from um, putting forward more initiatives, rather you're incapable of doing that. Mr. Chen, could you please come to your question? I'm coming to that, Madam President. Now, there are no new initiatives in your policy address and in, address, in uh, responding to people's requests, you're unable to respond actually. So my question is, should the chief executive uh, resign as soon as possible? Because uh, you are so incompetent, uh, we do, you do not want Hong Kong people to continue to suffer from your incompetence. You have raised a number of points, you know, incompetence, uh, grievances, resignation. Now, your, your very first point about the economy, if I could look at it from that perspective, I will uh, respond to that and then I will come to the question of my uh, resignation or otherwise. Now, the economic transformation is a very painful experience. On the 2nd of July, 1997, the Thai baht uh, was being linked from the US dollar and that sparked off the Asian financial crisis. After that, the bubble economy in Hong Kong bursted, property prices uh, plummeted 70%. Incentives were so low, and most people in Hong Kong have seen their um, assets um, drop substantially in value. And then we also uh, saw negative assets, and there was a serious uh, fiscal deficit problem, and there was serious deflation. Second, um, globalization uh, and the mismatch uh, of the labor sector, the production being shifted out of Hong Kong, and high structural unemployment rate, and the um, downward trend of uh, the um, wages. Another th it's another phenomenon. Third, uh, the mainland cities are rising very rapidly, and all these are external uh, factors uh, that are coming in thick and fast. If things were looming before 1997, but after 1997, uh, they came to Hong Kong like an avalanche. We've seen uh, rising unemployment, uh, the property prices uh, plummeting. Of course, people were discontent, and there were uh, there was uh, anger. And to contain the deficit, we had to increase uh, the fees and charges. We had to slash expenditure, people uh, were dealt a blow, another blow by the government policies. Of course, people felt terribly unhappy. But from our perspective, these external factors uh, were at work. 
we had to come up with measures, but no measure would yield immediate and overnight results. We took stock of the situation and managed to carve out a path for us. Now, this path is uh, leading us, uh, and this is giving us a glimmer of hope. Our policy of leveraging on the mainland and under the leadership, um, under the uh, the help of the mainland, we are moving. Despite the SARS outbreak, our economy has been coming back. I am very confident, I am very optimistic about the economic prospect over the next two years. Mr. Chen, over the past five and a half years, do you, do you know what the deflation rate, the GDP deflator, stood at 21%? In 1929, during the Great Depression in the US, the situation wasn't as serious. The GDP deflator in the U.S. at the time was 26%. Uh, unemployment was 22%. It was a very, very dire situation at the time. So I must make clear to you that over the past five and a half years, we were up against a very, very unusual situation. But as I said, we managed to carve out a path for us. At that time, as you all know, the uh, financial market and also the banking sector experienced the difficulties with unemployment rates standing at 20 uh, odd percent. If you look at uh, the situation in Hong Kong, uh, despite the SARS outbreak and, and various other issues, the financial sector and also the banking sector still operating, uh, still ha have been operating like normal. The community has been operating like normal. The government uh, has been operating like normal. Jobless rate uh, has hit um, more than 8%. Now, Hong Kong people are really absolutely fantastic. Not the government, but the general public. They are fantastic people. They put up with uh, all this suffering, and, and we managed to carve out a path for ourselves. I don't think we should underestimate our achievements. In the days to come, the economy is going to look up this year and also next year. If uh, you cast a sight longer over the medium term, um, the um, economy in the mainland uh, would be uh, uh, doubled in GDP uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, four trillion dollars. Hong Kong is going to stand to benefit. The people of Hong Kong are concerned about livelihood and also the economy. We have the collective obligation to make a success of it. Whether I go or stay, it's a trivial matter. It's a matter of no significance. It's so easy for me to go. I said it many times. To stay is not an easy task. It would take commitment. It would take a lot of um, dedication. I still have a lot of work to do. I will continue to do it. Thank you very much. Mr. Chen. Uh, Mr. Tong uh, mentioned so many problems, uh, economic uh, recession, unemployment. Uh, he said as if uh, he's got nothing to do with it. He said as if uh, these issues are so unusual. Now, the thing is, the other places in the world don't have a person like Tong Chi Wa. Now, if uh, there are problems, you, you may be um, the part of the problem. The people are asking for you to go as soon as possible. If you go, then it would be, you would be giving people hope for a revival in Hong Kong. Mr. Tong, I don't think um, I should dignify uh, the honorable gentleman with an answer. Mr. Yuko Him. Mr. Tong, uh, in your policy address, you talked about uh, seizing opportunities. Um, for development and promoting people-based governance. Mr. Tong, how do you interpret uh, people-based governance? You also said that uh, you would give people a respite. Does it mean that over the next couple of years there would not be any fee and charges increase by uh, Mr. Henry Tank? Mr. Tong. Well, the FS might uh, have more complex uh, considerations than I do. 
indeed, uh, in the year 08, 09, uh, we have to uh, restore the uh, fiscal balance. So this is very much um, the aspirations of the whole of Hong Kong. And this is going to be good or crucial for the financial or monitoring sector. The economy is coming back, and the government's revenue is uh, going to increase, and this would give us an opportunity there to balance the book. Either you reduce expenditure, or you put up the fees and charges, or you uh, you have um, economic um, recovery. We hope that uh, if the economy is doing well, in particular if uh, deflation uh, would ease and, and even disappear, we hope that uh, revenue would be increasing to such an extent that um, there would be greater room for us to maneuver. And we hope to give people um, an opportunity for respite. Uh, this is the overall direction. As to the fine details, I hope uh, uh, you would um, ask uh, Mr. Henry Tang. Now, the other thing is uh, you asked uh, a question about uh, giving people a respite and also uh, these people-based um, governance. I think uh, it's all a matter of uh, attitude. Whatever we do, we have to put uh, the people first. We have to be modest, candid, pragmatic, and be open with uh, the general public. We have to, to be uh, in more of a listening mode. That the, the word uh, respite, I've listened to so many views, many people uh, tell me that it's important to give people a respite. At least against this background that, um, that um, I put together this uh, in the policy address. We're going to attach more importance to public opinion. And with a better economy, we hope that uh, we can give people a respite. Mr. Yip, Madam President, uh, Mr. Tong, uh, some media uh, said that um, originally, probably, um, the title should have could have been uh, uh, promoting democratic governance instead of promoting people-based governance. Uh, but like Mr. Tong said, uh, you like to put people first. But in connection with uh, promotion of democracy, what does uh, Mr. Tong have to say to us? Mr. Tong, democracy is everybody's aspiration. The basic law has very clear stipulation. We are going to promote democracy in conformity with the basic law. We would do a good job in this regard. I said many times before, but I say again that to start um, uh, constitutional review, we have to get the legal matters out of the way as, as a first step. And that task uh, has, uh, is being embarked on. Uh, Mr. Tung, it is uh, 4 o'clock now. You've answered uh, 14 questions. I'm wondering whether you would be prepared to uh, take um, one or two more questions. Indeed. Mr. Martin Lee. Madam President, I am a Catholic. I know nothing about Taoism. I am not going to ask you uh, uh, to re resign, and I hope you will answer my questions. Now, for the people of Hong Kong, uh, you talked about the consultation with the people of Hong Kong as if this is a legal matter. Now, if uh, the legal community, the legal opinion in Hong Kong is consistent that uh, we can uh, get this done in Hong Kong, and if uh, the mainland authority, authorities um, uh, differ, uh, would you? give us the assurance that uh, you would not uh, seek a reinterpretation of the basic law um, by the NPCSC. Can you give us the reassurance, Mr. Tong? Mr. Lee, I am uh, none of uh, what you said. Uh, I'm not a Taoist. I'm not a Catholic. 
I don't have a crystal ball about uh, what's going to happen in the future. All I can tell you is that uh, what we are doing is indeed to find out precisely about the um, things about the legal matters uh, uh, prior to uh, getting on with the constitutional review. I think this is um, a perfectly reasonable uh, step. Mr. Lee, well, Mr. Tong, uh, you, you can't even give us any reassurance on a simple question like this. Will you tell us uh, since when has the Hong Kong SAL government joined the uh, uh, camping party of Chen Shui Bian? Mr. Tong, I don't think I'm with you uh, uh, in relation to this question, but I can tell you that uh, we are all very concerned about uh, the Taiwan issue. And I hope that uh, you would hope that uh, we will see reunification sooner rather than later. Mr. Howard Young. Mr. Tong, I think uh, there is uh, a consensus um, that this is th uh, three steps ahead or three steps behind. Um, when we uh, signed the agreement uh, for the Disneyland, uh, we talked about uh, individual travel, and this is something that has already happened. Uh, the individual travel scheme has stimulated um, many sectors, but the hotel industry told us that um, the individual travel scheme boosted the occupancy rate by 1%, and the airlines uh, are not uh, benefiting from that at all. In paragraph 25, Mr. Tung said that um, there would be an expansion of the solo travel scheme. Would you cover long-range uh, visitors uh, who, who come from uh, uh, high-consuming uh, cities uh, or further and further afield instead of just covering Guangdong province, Mr. Tong. Well, they may not come to Hong Kong by plane. They may not uh, stay in hotels in Hong Kong. But the mere fact that they are in Hong Kong uh, has stimulated the economy. Before May this year, uh, we would be covering the entire of Guangdong province in this individual travel scheme. For the other areas, we would be working on that. We would be alive to uh, the views of uh, the, the, the travel sector as to uh, what cities should be covered. In Shanghai and, and in Beijing, uh, there is a huge potential. I don't think we've done quite uh, nearly enough to lure uh, residents from Beijing and Shanghai to come to Hong Kong. I hope that uh, more can be done in this regard. Mr. Howard Young. Mr. Tong mentioned Beijing. Uh, actually, the industry believes that uh, for the long haul, the cities um, farther away, if they take a plane to here, there will be uh, bigger economic benefits. But then in some cases, there are not direct routes linking Hong Kong with these cities. So um, next month, when you have your annual um, negotiations with the Chinese authorities on increasing flight frequencies, would you please uh, uh, um, make sure that the Economic uh, Development and Labor Bureau will uh, lobby harder on behalf of the, all the airlines in Hong Kong for more flights? Slots. Well, that's a good thing, uh, and that will uh, benefit Hong Kong. I'm sure we'll do, we'll do that. Well, I'd like to thank the Chief Executive for taking up questions from 16 members. Nine members uh, waited a long time, but unfortunately they didn't have a chance. I hope next time you have a chance to put questions to the Chief Executive. Will members please stand while the Chief Executive leaves the chamber? And now adjourn the council until 2.30 p.m. on Wednesday, the 14th of January, 2004.